kind of go into it and explain what polyamory is and sure and uh well, this I think it's really neat that it's in the dictionary because the term was actually coined by my beloved soulmate Morning Glory back in 1990, and that it, um, it has be, it is really it's a profoundly significant word, and it is now officially in the dictionary, so you can look it up, and it's correctly defined because they actually called her to consult with her on and on how to write it. Um, basically, polyamory simply means um, you know many lovers, having many lovers, really loving many. It's a uh, it's interesting. It's it's a. I guess why it's such an unusual term and hadn't been thought of before was that it it breaks the rules and combines Greek and Latin, and you just don't normally do that. Although these days even paleontologists are doing it, so it's okay. But um, uh, poly means many, and amory means love. And um, but we we this came about when Morning Glory had been asked by um, our third partner of the time, Diane Darling, who we were together with for ten years, and who was. Uh, our co-partner in so many adventures, including, you know, the, you know, the great glorious um, 1990s era of Green Egg magazine, and the Unicorn Project, and lots of other cool things we did together. Um, uh, Diane asked her to write an article about about this. And now polyamory is basically about um, living a life of, in in which you are not just restricted to having only one lover. You know, you. And this could be in a full relationship, like a group marriage, or it could be um, having other partners. Or, but it's 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 we're not talking. It's not just like casual sex. You know, it's lover in the sense of people that you are have a love relationship with. But it's generally assumed to, but not required, I suppose, to have sex. I mean, there's people who are married who don't have sex. You know, or but, you know, so that's really not the issue so much. But it's people you would think of as lovers, really. You know. Um, and there's and there's rules for how to do this and make it work. I, I think the model that Morning Glory and I um, use a lot when we describe this stuff is how it is with birds, because in, you know birds have a lot a wide variety of how they pair up and stuff. You've got um, songbirds that pair up for a season and are totally devoted to each other for a season, and they'll build a nest and lay eggs and raise babies, and then at the end of the season they all fly away, and next year they start all over with somebody totally different. And that's the way it works for them. And you got some like the you know hawks and owls and eagles that are um, monogamous. They they find a single partner and it's a lifetime bond, and the two of them are together forever until death do them part. And you get ones like you know um, chickens and fowl that are completely promiscuous. They just you know screw around you know, and there's no no concept of really partnering up anyway. They just hang out in the flock and. And that's how they go. So all these models are there in human society as well. And I think the songbird model is what we call serial monogamy may very well be the most common natural pattern for most people. But it's not the only one. All people are very diverse. There are people who totally are good for a lifetime monogamous relationship with somebody and they never even think about anybody else. And there's some people who simply cannot be with, um, exclusively with one person for more than a week before they just get, you know, needing somebody different. And, you know, and everything in between, everything in between. The idea of polyamory is sort of like um, being in love means never having to say goodbye, because if you find yourself falling in love with a new relationship, it doesn't mean you have to end the previous one. It means that you can see if you can bring them in and, and make it all work together. And this was kind of proposed and in a very positive way, in Heinlein's novel that we talked about at the very beginning, Strange in a Strange Land, it was really very, very well done, how it's possible to do this. And so when Lance and I shared water low those many years ago, and uh, one of the things that we said we would try to live by was that model of um, polyamory, although we didn't have that word for it, but... Uh, a non-jealous, inclusive relationship. So, I mean, again, we keep getting back to this inclusivity thing. That's just, just the key element of so much of all this, is this concept of inclusivity. And it works. It works amazingly well. And um, it's become very widespread, not just in the pagan community and not just in the church of all worlds, but it's moving out into the larger world. Not that everybody should be doing this or that we recommend it or advocated or or anything really you know we're not trying to recruit anybody here but for people who are naturally inclined to um 
you know, fall in love with somebody else while not falling out of love with the person that they're already involved with. How does that, how do you make that work? How, is that possible to make that work? Well, it is, actually. It really is. You just have to approach it with honesty and integrity, you know, no sneaking around, no cheating, you know, no doing stuff behind somebody's back, no breaking agreements, you know, if you, I mean, you got to negotiate what kind of agreements you want to have that are going to work for everybody, you know, and if they're not working, then you renegotiate them. You don't, you don't cheat, you don't break them, you know, you just renegotiate them. It, it seems very fundamental, and I really think that the, the rules that Morning Glory wrote up in her seminal article, uh, Bouquet of Lovers, which is available on, on the CIW website, or you can just Google Bouquet of Lovers, because, geez, there's countless versions of it out there. Well, actually, it's all the same version, but, but it's put out in lots of places. Um, bouquet of Lovers, or, or, or just Google polyamory, my goodness. Um, she mapped this out there, laid down a foundation uh, of an honesty and integrity and caring for each other. She laid out patterns of primary and secondary and tertiary relationships that give you know, primacy and priority to the seniority, to the senior relationships, as it were, that have to be consulted and bring it together. So if, you know, and it worked out very well for us, especially because our life in the pagan community has taken us into travels where we are all over the world, you know, we'll be going someplace. We, they can't always bring both of us. Sometimes one or the other of us, most of the time, is, is off on the other side of the country or the other side of the planet attending some big pagan gathering, and, and there's wonderful people there. I mean, pagans, my goodness, you know, and there's you know, more, no more amazing women in the world than pagan women, and probably I think the same thing would probably be said for pagan men, although I'm personally probably paying more attention to the women. <laughs> but they're amazing women, you know, and and very often uh, we will meet somebody out there that will just really hit it off with, and there we are, far from home. So, you know, if you're not with the one you love, love the one you're with, kind of principle here. So, the, but the thing that's 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 really poly part of this is that the impulse that we have then is, oh man, I can't wait to bring you home and meet my other partner, you know, and we're immediately trying to arrange for, okay, when can you come to California, you know, and how can we get together, or or maybe next year, you know, the other partner will be out here too, and we'll get to introduce everybody to each other. Um, you know, it's like the the standard thing of you courting some new person, and you want to bring them home for the classic meet the family dinner, and uh, that's kind of the way it works with us, really. So this has been a thing that has really made it work for us. People will say, well, you guys have been together forever. We, Morning Glory and I, mean, we've been together for 36 years. And people say, that's amazing. And we're still crazy about each other after all these years, in addition to just still being crazy. And they say, well, what's your secret? And Morning Glory will say, well, you probably don't want to know, you know, really. But uh, <laughs> the secret is, you know, that we have other lovers, you know, and that it's um, – it's a team effort, you know. We call it reinforcements. You know, it takes more than one other person to meet all your needs. Because nobody can do that. Nobody can really, really fully meet all the needs of another person. I think, you know. Now, we do really good. I mean, we are Morning Glory and I are aligned on so many things. It's uncanny. We we read the same books. You know, if we if we go out to dinner, we end up ordering the same food. You know, it's. Um, we're very much like that, you know, we see the same movies, but every now and then there's something where, you know, I wanted to go see the um, uh, 20 foot 12 apocalypse movie just to watch if things more get stuff get blown up because, you know, who doesn't like to watch <laughs> stuff get blown up? But Morning Glory didn't want to go see that. She said, you know, I see enough stuff get blown up. It's a guy thing, you know. So, you know, I went out with, uh, I went out with Wolf, who was our co-husband in our, in our Ravenheart family for years. And, we had a great time there because we couldn't get our women to come with us, you know. And it's fine. It all works. The, I think a major – it annoys me that the whole poly thing is equated publicly so much with the Mormons and their polygamy thing because, well, it's not even remotely the same thing. The, the polygamy model, A, it involves marrying everybody. That's what the word means. Poly, many, marry. The, the gammy part means marriage. So – you know, you don't have to marry everybody just because you have lots of lovers, and that's one thing. But the other one is that the models you see everywhere is like one guy and a whole bunch of women. I think, man, that's just who made that up. You know, that's crazy. Well, I know the history, of course. But, you know, in real poly uh, polyamory, 
you know, it doesn't define who the partners can be, you know, what gender they have to be. They could all be the same gender. I know, I know some wonderful lesbian triplets, you know, that are just great. Well, triples, you know, triads, I guess is the word. And um, that's fine. That's all fine. You know, how many of which gender you may have in a group, the, the most common poly relationship, of course, is three, because that's where you move beyond monogamy to the next step. So you get a lot of triads. And sometimes it's one guy and two women. Sometimes it's two guys and one woman, you know, and, and it gets more complicated when you add on to that. In the Raven Hearts, we had, um, you know, two guys and three women, and it was all great. It's all great. We're not presently living together anymore, as we were for quite a few years, simply because our living situation changed, and we don't have the physical facilities. But we're still very, very close and still hang out together and do things and love each other very much. And I expect that we always will, because, like I said, there's no reason to say goodbye in this thing, you know. So we now think of the Raven Hearts more as a clan, I think, than, than specifically a group marriage. But for a while, it was definitely at the group marriage place. So there you are. Well, there you go. That's awesome. I really, that's not the best uh, definition I can think of. 